Jeez oh Pete's guys, this is uh pretty difficult. Don't have much space on my Jeez oh. I don't think you can climb on that little buddy. He seems quite determined. Here. Yeah. These guys are awesome pets. Let me tell you that. These are gargoyle geckos, and this is what this video is going to be on. Is the uh, care. I don't need you going up there. Come on. Go down. Now I'm going to have to put you guys down for a second. Enjoy the staring of cool bark. Dun dun. Dun dun. Dun 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 Okay. Well, this is going to be a care video on gargoyle geckos. I'm going to make this a little quicker. I seem to have be have some issues with my memory card or camera or something. I won't record that long of video. But, um, let's start off immediately. Uh, gargoyle geckos are in the family of Rachidactylus, uh, which is an arboreal, tropical gecko, and they are usually omnivores. They'll eat both insects and fruit in the wild. I feed mine rapashi, which is a powdered substance. It's very good for uh, gargoyles, cresteds, any fruit-eating gecko, because it has all the uh, good vitamins. It comes in a powder. You just mix it with water and put it in a little bowl. I highly suggest getting something like this so that their bowl is elevated and off of the ground. They're usually never on the ground to eat or do anything, usually. And it uh, saves them from impaction. Now let's get on to that topic real quick. You can have coconut fiber as their substrate. I suggest waiting until at least they're uh, a little bit bigger than, like, or a little big, like, uh, further into their juvenile years. Uh, babies, I suggest keeping on paper towel that's damp. Geez, you really have to keep an eye on these guys. He's just venturing away. But um, tank size, juveniles and babies, I suggest 12 by 12 by 18. You need more height with these geckos. They are an, an arboreal species, so they need places to climb and be away from the ground. Uh, when they're older, they can be about 7 to 8 inches as the average that I know. And that uh, I do suggest a larger tank, however, they can live in 12 by 12 by 18 for the remainder of their lives. And I do, I would suggest something like an 18 by 18 by 24 for an adult. You can have a female pair in an 18 by 18 by 24 as well. And do not put two uh, male gargoyles together in the same enclosure. They can and most likely will fight, which can cause harm to your gecko, and you really do not want that. Um, <clears throat> temperatures, um, usually a room temperature is perfectly fine, like, uh, mid-60s, and they also don't go higher than about, like, 80, I say 82, 83 is the high, and, like, 63 is the, 62, 63 is the low. It can range in between there, since they're a tropical gecko, but the most important thing is their humidity. Uh, keep their humidity at about 50 to 60 percent and um, after a immediate spray it's okay to see a rise to 80 to even 100 percent that would be a good thing um, let's get to what specifically they eat I feed mine the rapashi food as well as mealworms and crickets you size the crickets between the uh, space between their eyes let's see if I can get them away from his leaves over here There we go. All right. Space between his eyes right there. Make sure the cricket is no bigger than the space between their eyes. He is eating size 3 fourths crickets, so it's almost adult size crickets, and he's doing very well. He's quite a fat and happy little gecko. And they can eat, they, he can probably put down a superworm at this size, but I prefer feeding him mealworms still. Um, geez, oh, Pete, they are so adventurous. Just gotta really keep an eye on them. Another thing is make sure you do not need a water bowl. Um, they usually never, I never see them drink from a water bowl or drink from a bowl that has water in it or something like that. They uh, drink the uh, mist and water that uh, condensates on the side of the glass and the plants. So I say make sure to mist your tank at least twice a day. I do it once in the morning when I wake up and once at night when I go to bed. That keeps the humidity very con at, a, at a nice constant and makes sure that he's uh, got plenty of water if he's ever thirsty. Uh, another thing about the Rapashi, uh, you put in those little cups up there or wherever you have to 
put your rapashi or powder substance. You do need that. Um, they don't need crickets or mealworms, but a necessity is the rapashi because it does have all the essential vitamins and minerals that they need to stay healthy. Um, and you just, um, I say make sure to replace it like every three days. Like, I, I, you, can, you can go with it in the tank for about a week. But then I say start taking it out once it starts looking dry and less like pasty. Ugh, come here. And that's basically uh, that's basically would be okay for them. Also, um, they are very are very nice geckos. They like like uh, being out of their tanks. They like to adventure. But it isn't a gecko for a younger child. I would say. They're a little too jumpy, and they can be pretty fast at times. And as you can see, he's kind of sliding down my leg a little bit there. He can't get enough traction. <laughs> as you can see, they're quite clumsy. And very fast. But um, I recommend this for someone who has a little more experience with handling animals, um, since they can be fast and jumpy. Uh, also, I haven't really had any problems or heard of problems with the gargoyles uh, dropping their tails. I've never seen that, or I'm sure that they can under stress, so do make sure that you do not stress them out, and they're very comfortable and happy in their surrounding environment. So, now let's get to uh, what will go into the tank. I suggest putting as much stuff into their habitat as you can. Like, I have a vine, a uh, very nice vine, by the way. I don't remember the brand, but it looks very natural. It even has little bits of moss and stuff growing on it. Very cool can bend it and put it in whatever direction you want it to. Let's put this over here so we might adventure onto that instead of my weights or whatever else is over there. Um, you make sure that you have lots of cover, lots of plant cover and places for them to hide because they are timid geckos. They do not like being out in the open. And that uh, reminds me of that uh, brings up another point. They do not need any sort of light. If you prefer to have a light on your gecko, use a lower wattage bulb, preferably an infrared bulb so it doesn't disturb them since they are a nocturnal gecko. And they do not need UVB in that other uh, sense as well since they are nocturnal they are never in the sun. UVB isn't necessary although it can be given to them. So you can see he likes his vine. So let's start putting some of the stuff in. I got uh, a little cork bark here. I like to put that a little on the side, something like that, like right here or right here, just so it's out of the way. But first things first, put the biggest plant of all in. So I'm going to sit you guys down real quick, stare at some plants or whatever. Well, I got to get him off of this vine, set him down right there, there we go. And this, I decided to do this video today on a few reasons. He's uh, getting bigger. Wanted to give him a little bit more of a uh, change up his tank, the looks of his tank, for one thing. It is good to uh, vary the, his ha their habitats because they do like change. They like uh, the different things in their tank because they do like to explore at night. And they do like a little bit of differences. As you can see, that vine's in there right now and takes up a lot of space. That's good though. One more set down real quick for you guys. Just stare over there. Hopefully it doesn't run away too far. <laughs> Alright, now let's, uh, I'm just going to stick the cork bark on in here as well. Give him another little space to hide as well as some more support for him. It can look however you, like you want it to. You can adjust it or leave it the way it is. Let's see if I can prop this camera up a little bit for you guys. Maybe... Jeez, I am doing horrible camera work for you. I'm sorry. But, what are you gonna do? Ugh, no cameraman, you know? How do people do this? Maybe a little more adjusting. And feel free to take time when you're doing this. Just make sure you keep an eye on your gecko or have a separate place for him to be while you're doing this to make sure he does not escape or try to escape. And do keep in mind that you will have to be able to close your tank. A little more bending maybe. 
That's what I like about these vines, is that they're very flexible. They can bend just about any which way you want them to. And make sure to cover up the bottom if you've moved some substrate around, which you probably have. And now I'm just going to slide the cork bark on in while doing some more shoddy camel work. <laughs> but hey, hey, beggars can't be choosers, all right? So that's what it's looking right, like right now. I'm going to take one of his plants right here. And I'm just going to stick it on up in there. Oh boy, that could sound wrong. No one else gets that little bit right there. But got his plant cover and his last plant cover. Come here. He does not want to leave this thing. He feels safe, which is good. Come on. I need you to go right there for a second, alright buddy? Okay. Let's put you down one last time. Sorry about this guys, just too much putting down and picking up. Probably freaking you guys out. Last but definitely not least, the humidifier. Gotta make sure that's in a good visible spot that you can tell what the, temp what the humidity is. And one of the most important things is misting. Make sure you mist the cage very nicely. That's the setup at this moment. I think it looks quite nice. So I'm just going to give the cage a quick mist down. I like them to mist the substrate some, make it a little more damp. As you can see, he's quite eager to get back in there. So I'm going to try not to waste any more time. Sorry about this really bad camera quality there right here, but... And then he goes to his favorite terrarium, his home, and as you can see, he's quite happy. <laughs> as you can tell, very clumsy. But one of the reasons why I love them so much is because they're so clumsy. But that's their terrarium. I hope you guys can en enjoyed this video. It's been Zaminator 100 in Yamori, which also means uh, gecko in Japanese for those of you who did not know. And hope you liked the video. Peace and out.